What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch with SC Weather. I hope you all been having a great weekend. We're going to talk about the potential for uh, a system that maybe emerges uh, mid to late week and how it can impact the weather into this weekend. This is going to mainly be a Midwest thing, but it can eventually drift to the eastern U.S., affect places in the southeast, mid-Atlantic, northeast. So we're going to talk about what the models are showing with this because this definitely looks like the next significant lower 48 storm uh, that is definitely worth talking about as models are really starting to hone in on this and showing the potential for a significant impactful event, potentially, uh, as we get the next few days on through. But if you guys have not subscribed, consider subscribing. It is very slow right now. Growth is incredibly slow. In fact, I've had the same amount of subscribers for the last, I would say, four or five days, which is okay. You know, right now, it's been a nice break because it's been so active the last few months. So it actually has been nice just being able to... Um, I guess not being, being glued to my phone and, uh, you know, constantly having to check things. I don't have to, but when you have a passion, it's hard to pull yourself away from it sometimes. So it's been a nice break, but definitely consider uh, subscribing, liking the video. I do plan on upgrading my setup here in the future for sure. But let's get on and get going. So the next 6 to 10 days, so March 13th through the 17th, uh, check it out. A huge portion of the lower 48 has a chance to be below average temperature wise, but check it out, it shifts more east as you get to the eight to 14 day outlook. So that's the 15th through the 21st of March. So I think as we get to mid, maybe into the third week of March, um, unfortunately for you spring lovers, I do think it's going to be delayed a little bit. We're gonna see how this uh, evolves because it could change a lot, but I really do think that this, uh, you know, this week coming up is supposed to be very warm well, not very warm, but warm here in the southeast and the, even into the mid-Atlantic, just the eastern U.S. in general, and even the Midwest, I don't think it's something that's set in stone for the, you know, long period of time here. But check it out, the latest GFS here, and we're going to get through in time. Look how quiet it is. We're getting to Tuesday, we're getting to Wednesday, and you got a trough setting up here, a cold front, basically a boundary between two different air masses. And you get a low pressure that pops up here, pumps out a storm, there's going to be a... Maybe a little small threat of severe weather here in the Midwest, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma. I don't think this is going to be a really a big deal at all, but we'll watch that. But this is the this is the big storm I'm really talking about here. Now, granted, this is six days out. It's March 13th time frame. Um, the Midwest and the really the Southern Plains, like Denver, Eastern Colorado, can really get some dynamic weather really in in basically in March because it's the change in the seasons. There's just a lot of dynamic storms in this area. In fact, a lot of the front range areas in Colorado, Wyoming, uh, their snowiest months come in March. In fact, it is their snowiest months depending on where you are in the state. So uh, it's not uncommon to get major winter storms in this area. But this is an area I'm watching. You get a low pressure here. And this looks like a almost like a cutoff low here. But who knows what exactly this is, but it does look like some kind of storm system. Is it going to be a severe weather part of it here in Oklahoma, Nebraska, depending on where you are? Uh, not sure, but it's something to watch for sure. But check out this heavy snow breaking out in Denver, um, eastern areas of Colorado, um, areas of western areas of Kansas. This, is, this could be a big time event. And check it out. It just keeps spinning over this area that has some very heavy snow. Um, and this is basically looks like an upper level low, a cutoff low. And uh, this is kind of the area you need to watch for severe weather. Now, this might not be severe weather. It just could be rain, but it's something we need to watch. But this looks like a big-time storm system that really could produce a significant snowstorm for areas of Colorado and Kansas, Nebraska. Who knows? Maybe it can sneak into the panhandle of Texas. But this is a storm that's been showing up a good bit. Where the axis of whatever does fall is, we don't know because it's six days out. But this storm does advance eastward. And gives areas potentially of the eastern U.S. their first rain in several days. I'm talking a week. We're going to really dry out here in the eastern U.S. It's, it's really going to get maybe even quite dry, especially right now. The dew points are incredibly low, depending on where you are in the eastern U.S., so uh, it's actually some fire hazards. But check out how this storm gets into the northeast. It almost until it turns into a quick nor'easter. It's not uncommon at all to get uh, nor'easter to even deep into March here for areas like Boston, even New York City, I mean, it, it, once you get into the latter part of the month, it's, it gets pretty uncommon. But, but you look at 2018 as a good analog there. They got 
big time, uh, I think three or four, I think four nor'easters in a row um, in this area. So all the way through late March. So check out this storm. This is 216 hours out. But you guys in, you guys in uh, the northeast, don't let your guard down for winter yet because there's some cold times ahead. But as we get through here, we'll watch this storm here. Who knows what this storm will do, but this is so far out. The details are really foggy. But look at the European model with this storm. We're so quiet. Uh, storm moves through here. But this is the big time storm we're talking about. We get into this weekend. And this is the storm we have to watch out for for you guys out in the Midwest. This really could be a big time winter storm for areas of uh, Texas. Um the panhandle of Oklahoma. Uh, the European has it just like the GFS has it. So <clears throat> is there going to be some kind of severe weather on kind of the lower end of this, the southern end of this? Well, some kind of warm sector. More details will emerge, guys, but this this turns into a pretty big snowstorm for Kansas and uh, works its way through and uh, gets into the northeast, and it doesn't look like it has that same northeastern look. But uh, definitely needs to watch out for some kind of severe weather for this too. We're going to look at Cape here on the GFS and check it out. There's a little bit that pops up here into Wednesday, but keep in mind is that that event looks small, but <clears throat> as you have low pressure riding here, this is the cold sector of the storm. You need to watch the southern sectors of the storm. It has a little bit of Cape up there. It's not super high, but there's going to be a lot of shear. So, we're just not going to know this. I know there's a lot of storm chasers out there that really want something to chase. And I really think if they're going to chase anything, it's probably going to be this weekend. But there's just not enough details to know what the main threat's going to be with this. It's definitely not going to be any kind of tornado outbreak, I don't think. But uh, there's definitely, you can start to see the cape is starting to kind of uptick. But it depends on what happens here, man. You, you, need, you need these... Uh, you need a lot of warm air and you need moist air for these things to happen. But check it out, the uh, EPS ensembles. Um, as we get into the weekend, that is a strong signal this far out for um, some kind of winter weather. So from Denver, um, eastern Colorado, um, Kansas, Nebraska, even parts of Texas, um, Oklahoma, you need to watch out. And then check it out as it spreads into the Ohio Valley. There's still a signal for snow here. I know we're getting later into March, but... You can't dis discount snow even even at this uh, late into the um, into the winter, if you will. So it's definitely this is this is a big big signal for a big time uh, snowstorm in Denver. So it's definitely something we need to watch here. And look at the GFS. This is the operational run. This is this is what you call a, just a goofy run here. Um, Thirty seven inches there in the uh, south <clears throat> the southeast area of Kansas. That is ridiculous. That's that's not going to happen. But there has been some crazy snowstorms in this area before in late, even all the way into April. So uh, it's not uncommon to get snowstorms in this area. That's why I, I really think something's going to occur here and you get some severe weather in this area. But this could really potentially be a big time snowstorm for these areas. Now, um, I do want to talk about as basically the um, <clears throat> trough is setting up here, you're going to get basically an active jet here that gets going and you're going to get storm system after storm system so this is all the way in through let's see this is about 200 hours out so this is about until next tuesday so check it out you can see the access of heavy precipitation it's not a lot of precipitation in the uh, southeast but i think as we get into mid to late month we're going to start to get into a rainy period again here even in the southeast so that's something we need to watch out for for sure but temperatures um Let's go on and go through this. Let's get out of that. Not looking at soundings, but um, check it out here. Uh, this is Monday. Uh, we're warming up. Look at all the warm air. It's in the 50s all the way in the North Dakota for highs, according to the GFS. We get into Tuesday, almost all the way in the 60s into North Dakota. Get into Wednesday, and then the front moves through, and it goes from the 60s to the 20s for highs in areas in North Dakota. And this is just how it is. It's the change in the seasons. But Wednesday... Look how warm we get down here, all the way up into Michigan, Wisconsin, and the front moves through up there. And the compressional heating keep, keeps uh, gets going, and the ridge is going to flex for as long as it can until this trough, this boundary, pushes and pushes. But here you go, you get warm, and it really looks like a good weekend right now. Now, Sunday for sure is in jeopardy for areas of the extreme southeast. You got a front moving here, you got some kind of uh, cold air on top of here, but. Look here, you get through here and it gets much cooler as you get into mid to latter part of the month. But that's also much further out, so we don't know what's going to happen here. 
But um, I'll be honest with the Southeast, uh, Mid Atlantic, the Deep South. I don't really see any severe weather to really talk about right now. But there is going to be a big time system for the Midwest, the Southern Plains. Um, There's something going to be watched this weekend. So we're going to watch to see what that does. How does that? Em- how does that unfold as it moves eastward? Not sure, but we're going to know here in a few days. But thank you all for tuning in, and you all have a great rest of your evening.